bicuspid aortic valve is a condition that has been the subject of widely divergent uh, reports. Um, surgeons have reported that aortic dissection may occur for patients who have uh, uh, very little dilatation of the aorta and dissection has been a complication feared in the context of a bicuspid aortic valve. Um, leading uh, a few years ago, the uh, um, ACCAHA to put a guidelines where the size of the aorta to proceed to um, aorta surgery was set at the lower level than in the general population. My name is uh, Maurice Enrique Serrano. I'm Emeritus Professor of Medicine at uh, Mayo Clinic Rochester. And I am here to talk about uh, the manuscript of my colleagues, Dr. Chang and senior author, Professor Trivoulois from France on bicuspid bid aortic valve and their uh, outcome. Uh, the uh, uh, report is about a little bit more than 500 consecutive patients with bicuspid aortic valve seen in a regional center in France, uh, um, uh, detailing the characteristics of these patients and also um, um, presenting their outcome. The, the paper uh, finds the uh, usual uh, uh, characteristics at baseline with a predominant uh, population of 50 year old. And that's an important number that we'll see again uh, with bicuspid aortic valve that covers the entire span of severity. Uh, most of them were treated medically, at least initially, and a number of them received surgery. And these patients were seen in the context of a uh, um, regional medical center of the north of France, which is a referral center that can do any type of intervention, but also with a population of patients that rarely moves out of the region. So in a sense, it is almost population-based or community-based in the wider sense of a community of patients. So the study uh, uh, shows that at presentation, a number of patients have normally functioning bicuspid aortic valve and the predominant valve lesion on the bicuspid valve is as usual, aortic stenosis and a small number of patients have predominant aortic regurgitation. And in that it is representative of what we know about bicuspid aortic valve. The important points are the outcome data. The, the major outcome is the survival after diagnosis, irrespective of the treatment given for these patients, uh, is the outcome showing that the survival 10 years after the diagnosis is in general excellent, with a survival that is equivalent to the expected survival in the general population of the same region of France. The second point is that the uh, patients are uh, operated with a relatively high rate because within uh, the um, 10 years of the study, approximately 32% of the population of these patients undergo uh, uh, aortic valve replacement with a good outcome post uh, aortic valve replacement. And uh, in that series, no aortic dissection was observed and a small number of patients uh, had a complication due to endocarditis. So there was a, a, an, an ambience of, of fear about potential complications uh, related to bicuspid that would ultimately uh, affect the outcome of these patients. In this context, we have to uh, think about the, uh, the study that we have done with the team at Mayo in Olmsted County patients, showing that in the community of Olmsted County, the outcome of bicuspid aortic valve was good with a survival 
20 and 25 years after the diagnosis, that is equivalent to the general population, so no excess mortality, contrary to the previous surgical report suggesting a high risk in patients with, with bicuspid aortic valve. And with, uh, as the main complication, uh, the uh, occurrence of the need for aortic valve replacement, mostly for aortic stenosis and rarely for aortic regurgitation. Uh, around 20%, 25 years down the road, uh, need uh, also aortic replacement, but the number of cases of dissection was extremely low. 25 years after the diagnosis, we could see that this patient had a 0.5% risk of aortic dissection. In view of these data, the, the guidelines were changed and the size of the aorta for which we are uh, we have recommendation for aortic replacement has been moved from 50 millimeters to 55 millimeters, unless there are uh, risk for aortic dissection, such as a history of, uh, uh, of aortic dissection in the family. And, and so these, uh, this view, relatively benign on bicuspid aortic valve, has been disputed. And the main subject is whether the good outcome that was observed in Olmsted County was just related to the quality of care received at Mayo Clinic, or whether it was indeed the nature of bicuspid aortic valve to be relatively benign and not to cause a considerable rate of aortic dissection. So we analyze it further and, and the issue that we, that we came up in discussion with my friend, Professor Triboulois is the importance of having a verification data set in a different setting of a more regional care center. And this is the rationale for conducting this study. And so this study showing that overall in term of survival by cuspid aortic valve is benign comes as a confirmation of what we have seen in Olmsted County and shows that we should be very careful in recommending intervention in patients with bicuspid aortic valve because there is no excess mortality under the current care in those patients. So we have to be careful. And it comes as a confirmation that the threshold of 55 millimeter, like people who have a tricuspid valve and an aneurysm of the ascending aorta, is a very good uh, uh, threshold for proceeding with surgery without instilling fear in the patients for this dreaded complication. The other aspect where it's a great confirmation of uh, what happens to the patient with bicuspid aortic valve is that a, a, a relatively large number of these patients need an intervention at an age relatively young. This study started at 55 years of age approximately and 10 years down the road had uh, events. So we are around uh, uh, 50, 50, 65, 60 years, 65 years of age, 10 years down the road, the outcome is benign. We started uh, around 35 years and 25 years down the road, the outcome was relatively benign. So we're in that age of 60 and it tells us that we cover the same span of age of the patient with bicuspid. They were born with a bicuspid, but up to the age of uh, 55, 60, 65, the condition is relatively benign and needs monitoring for the aortic valve. And that's the second point. The, the, the relatively benign nature of bicuspid aortic valve is related to the nature of the bicuspid valve, not the care that is given. But the second point is care is necessary because close monitoring is required for this patient to be followed for the decision of the aortic valve replacement. 
And if the decision is not made in uh, uh, the right time with the appropriate timing without waiting for heart failure to occur, then, then we, we have a good outcome. If we wait for the heart failure, then we may have excess mortality. And, and in the patients that uh, we examine at Mayo, of a patient with bicuspid valve who underwent surgery, some were sent very late, and those patients sent late for severe symptoms of heart failure, then uh, suffered from excess mortality. So message is, the information in the literature is uniform, no reason to panic with bicuspid valve, we monitor the size of the aorta and we operate for the same criteria as in the general population of tricuspid aortic valve, but also we need to be careful and monitor the aortic valve disease and, and operate in time as early operation is as justified by cuspid as in tricuspid valve. And if we do that, we preserve the long-term survival of these patients and preserve their outcome. So uh, in terms of what this combination of papers tells us, it gives us a clear guideline on what we have to do to monitor the patient with bicuspid aortic valve and to make decision in regard to the ascending aorta and in regard to the aortic valve. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.